Hello and welcome to the third of our lockdown remote learning videos to start off AP Chemistry. Today we're going to be talking about a fairly uh, straightforward topic, but one that uh, certainly bears some review, and that is reaction stoichiometry. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, how to use our friend the mole to solve problems, not just about how many grams of one thing are in another, but how to deal with it in the context of a chemical reaction. Uh, and this introduces concepts like the limiting reagent, the excess reagent, uh, percent yield, um, all kinds of things that are certainly worth uh, understanding. Mole ratios, all sorts of good stuff. So let's look at um, an example problem involving uh, an acid-base reaction. Let's say we have the acid uh, sulfuric acid, H2SO4. To that, we're going to add some base, sodium hydroxide, and when you do that, as in most acid-base reactions, the outcome is water and then a salt. In this case, the salt is Na2SO4, sodium sulfate. Um, just to make life a little bit easier in the context of this problem, molar masses are going to be provided 98.1 grams per mole for sulfuric acid, 40 grams per mole for NaOH, 18.016 or 18.02 for water, and about 140. Okay, so... Uh, let's say that we are given uh, 18.1 grams of sulfuric acid, so 18.1 grams H2SO4, and we're going to mix it uh, with 15 grams of NaOH. Uh, let's say we want to know how many grams of uh, sodium sulfate are going to form. And we'll say we'll theoretically form. We'll talk about percent yield as we do this. Okay, so there's a lot of different ways to approach this. And, and I'll show you maybe two different ways. One of the ways that I prefer to do it is simply the same, in, in a lot of ways, the same way that we did uh, unit conversions, dimensional analysis, factor labeling, because all we're really doing is changing the way we're representing each of these masses and talking about what they're equivalent to in another substance. So... 18.1 grams of sulfuric acid are the equivalent of some number of grams of sodium sulfate. We just have to walk through the sort of conversion, just like $3 is equivalent to a gallon of gasoline or four bagels or whatever. You can certainly work through conversions to show how that works. It just is a little bit more convoluted than, than maybe some of those kinds of transactions. What I prefer to do when I do this is to do it for each substance. So you really kind of need to do these things twice. But there's a little bit of economy of scale. It gets a little easier when you do it for the second substance because some of the uh, factor labels are the same or at least contain similar information. So let's start with the... Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, do this in a different color. Um, let's say that you have the 18.1 grams of H2SO4. And for each of these, there's going to be three conversions. And I'll sort of briefly describe what each one of those three conversions will look like. The first one is simply going to be converting the H2SO4 to moles. The second one is utilizing the mole ratio to convert from moles of H2SO4 to moles of Na2SO4. And the third one is going to go back to grams of Na2SO4. So we'll fill in what we know here. One mole, 98.1 grams. That's the equivalent, of course, of dividing by the molar mass. That gives us moles of H2SO4. But we want moles of Na2SO4. Luckily, there's a one-to-one -one relationship here. Please note... Now that it's on video, there's very much a legal disclaimer for me. You cannot just write one over one here and hope that all turns out well. Yes, I realize that's an equivalence, but it doesn't change the identity of the substance in the context of the math you're doing. There has to be a reason why the substance is changing from its representation of sulfuric acid to that of sodium sulfate. So you have to kind of indicate the substance so that mole ratio should have both the number and the identity, the label of the substance. So now if we track through, we have moles of Na2SO4, and we go back to grams, we know its molar mass is 142 grams per mole. So if we do all that uh, correctly, you should get, I think, around 26.2. It's a good idea to check at home and make sure that that's what you get, or to let me know that I shouldn't have gotten the value that I did. I certainly am human, and I make plenty, 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 plenty of mistakes. Um, so that's the way I would solve it for that particular problem. You could also do the same thing for 
uh, NaOH or a similar thing for NaOH, so 15 grams of NaOH. And again, we're going to have three conversions. The nice thing about the system, as I said, there's a bit of an economy of scale, is that the last conversion is exactly the same, and the middle conversion has one similar part. So it's really not that different. So one mole, in this case, the one mole of NaOH only weighs 40 grams per mole, not 98. And while I still will be making one mole of Na2SO4, it takes two moles of NaOH to do that. So I have to factor that one to two relationship in. Um, and again, disclaimer-wise, you can't just write one over two. That is not an equivalence. So you can't do that. You've got to have the labels involved as well. And then the final conversion is exactly the same, 142 grams per mole. We're going back to grams here, ha having had moles. If we kind of walk through this one, we didn't really do it the last time, um, but if you walk through the divisions here, the grams divide out, the NaOHs divide out, and so far we have moles of Na2SO4, and then the moles divide out, and then we have grams of Na2SO4, which is exactly what uh, we were looking for. And when you do this, you get 26.6 grams of Na2SO4. So I could certainly put a box around that, but then I might realize, well, I can't make two different amounts of the same substance in one reaction. That would be like simultaneously making 18 and 21 cookies in a baking event. Either you made 18 or you made 21. You did not make both. So which did we actually make? Well, if you have enough eggs to make 21 cookies, but only enough flour to make 18, you make 18. And so we have enough NaOH to make 26.6 grams of Na2SO4. We do not have enough H2SO4 to make 26.6 grams of Na2SO4. So when we get to the 26.2 gram mark, that's the most we can make because we run out of H2SO4. And if you think about it, that means we've run out of SO4. It's hard to continue to make Na2SO4 when there's no more SO4 because all of it has been used up. So we'll remove that box uh, from the 26.6 grams of Na2SO4 and we will end up making just the 26.2 grams of Na2SO4. Um, that is the sort of nature of the limiting reagent. So we would label H2SO4 as the limiting reagent. That would make uh, NaOH the excess reagent. A couple of related ideas here. One, some of you might prefer to solve this in a sort of more proportional way. I'm not a huge fan of that in some ways, but it's quite space-saving and somewhat efficient. So let me just show you what that would look like in the context of, of um, NaOH. So what you would do is you'd put the 15 grams of NaOH on the top of one part of your proportion. Below that would go the uh, sort of what I call the recipe. And the recipe is that you should use two moles of it, each mole weighing 40. So that's my recipe for NaOH. Uh, that's exactly how much I should have. The 15 is how much I happen to have in this instance. It's, it's as though you looked at the recipe and realized you didn't have as much of the ingredients as you should, but you could scale it down from there. So the recipe, which again is gonna go on the bottom, the recipe for Na2SO4 is 142 grams because there's just one mole of it. And the amount we could make is what we don't know here. That's what my X would be. So I don't know this part. And so we'd solve for X, and when you did, it would turn out to be the 26.6 grams. Um, that method works just fine. So again, you've got all the things in there that you have in the factor labeling method. They're a little bit compressed. So you've got your mole ratio. It's kind of in there with the two, and, and technically there's sort of a hidden one here. Uh, so there's the mole ratios in there, the molar masses of each substance are in there. So it's kind of all in there, just in sort of a compressed form. The other thing that I want to briefly mention before we move on to another question related to this would be, uh, what about percent yield? Uh, you'll note in the question I made a point to mention this, it says, well, theoretically form. So we can theoretically make 26.2 grams of Na2SO4, but much like making cookies, it's really hard to get all the dough uh, all the batter out of the bowl, just like it's kind of hard to get all the Na2SO4 out of the container. Um, we're going to do a simulated sort of lab. Hopefully I can get into the classroom and, and sort of demonstrate and take some video for you guys. But in the first lab that we would normally do, it's very hard to get all the material out of the beaker that it's in. It just doesn't really come out. It's insoluble in water. So spraying water on it to try to get it out of there doesn't really work. It just sticks to the glass and that's sort of it. So, uh, Theoretical yields are 100%, but what if, you know, what if we had uh, at, and we'll do this in a different color as well, you know, what if we had 75% yield? 
Well, you would just take 75% of 26.2, meaning you left 25% behind. So you would multiply 0 0.75 times 26.2 grams uh, to get your value there. Um, uh, you know, probably somewhere around 19 point, you know, uh, six or something like that grams. I, I have no idea of it without a calculator at this point, but somewhere in that vicinity uh, it should be. So certainly less than what you'd, you'd want to get out of there, but, but somewhere in that 19 point something gram range, I think. So less than your 26.2 gram yield. So uh, that's how to solve that type of problem. Now, the, the one sort of tricky type of question that you sometimes get related to this might be uh, this question, which is how uh, much of the excess reagent remains? And they oftentimes leave it vague like this because they're not, oops, they're not telling you which uh, one is the excess reagent. So you've got to go and figure that out. Well, we already know it's NaOH. So the question is how much NaOH remains? There are a lot of ways to solve these problems. I think the easiest way, maybe the easiest way, for me it seems to be the easiest in terms of requiring less work, would be to figure out uh, how much of the excess product you didn't actually make and work back because that will show you how much of the excess reagent you didn't actually use. So we didn't make... 26.6 minus 26.2 of product. So we didn't make 0.4 grams. And there's, I'm sure there's some rounding in there, and so it's probably not exactly 0.4, but somewhere in that vicinity, 0.4. So what we do with that is, well, that product remembers Na2SO4. And so at this point, all we have to do is reverse our process and go from Na2SO4 back to the excess reagent, which is NaOH. So we just solve for NaOH. So we start with 0.4 grams of Na2SO4, and then we set up our system to solve for uh, NaOH. So we do the same thing. We convert to moles. We use the mole ratio. We go back to grams. So we were given all these values before. So one mole, 142 grams. Uh, then we know that the mole ratio in this case is 2 to 1. 2 NaOHs for every 1 Na2SO4. It's the reverse of the one that we used before. And then uh, we have the molar mass of NaOH in here. And again, if we were to track the divisions, the grams divide out, the moles divide out, and the Na2SO4s divide out. So we're left with grams of NaOH. And when you do that, give or take some rounding, I think I didn't round as much when I did this one uh, before. I got point. Uh, 2.4 grams of NaOH. So there would be 0.24 grams of NaOH that went unused. So not a whole lot, um, just a little bit of NaOH. So, you know, this reaction ran pretty close to the kind of exact ratio that it should have, but it wasn't quite spot on. So those are the main ways that we would use reaction stoichiometry. Um, we'll get little variations on that as we go through the year, sometimes, of course, with uh, molarity. You know, so when we have things like volumes of aqueous things, we'd use that. Um, gases sometimes, we'll talk about using Pivnert to solve these kinds of problems. So things like this pop up here and there throughout. But this is the main method uh, that you'd use to solve these. Uh, I'll sign off from this video. If, now that we're three videos in, if you have an idea for a good catchphrase that I should use to sign off from the videos, uh, please submit your idea for the catchphrase and we'll see if it, if it wins. Maybe I'll see if I can come up with a prize for the winner. Maybe we'll uh, put the top nominees up to a class vote. All right, have yourselves a good day and uh, stay healthy out there. And we will talk to you again virtually pretty soon. Bye-bye.